Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here to Vanilla TV. Four animal is it muted? There he <laughs> I don't is. know. I don't know if people heard that on stream, but I heard my own echo. Uh, welcome here to Vanilla TV, ladies and gentlemen. As we have the game going live here, probably in just a little bit. Uh, but thank you so much here for joining us. We have an awesome Night of Team Fortress 2 action in store for you guys, as per usual, with the good old duo of Pledge and Scully on our microphones, together with Animal here on stream. Scully, you haven't been around here for a while, guy. How are you doing? Um, this is like the first time I have uh, opened up TF2 for about a week. Nice. Well, I played my first 6v6 in about three months uh, on uh, Wednesday. Oh, like, nice. Last yeah. How was it? Uh... Okay. Um, uh, I've got to give a shout out to Kip TV because she did actually cast the STV of one of the the team I played with, Noah Energy's new team. Um, she did actually cast with the STV of that, so it was nice to not the game I was playing in, but I've just got to give a shout out there to someone supporting the communities. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, uh, you, what you play with Nervous Energy, I guess? Uh, no, I used to play for that team as a backup, but now I've just like said no. I've just not got the flu anymore in six v six. I can't play six v six. There, there's like a video of me at I forty where I almost smashed everything. No, I forty three where I almost smashed the table in just anger because we got back capped on ground on <laughs> So uh, I'm quite sure this video is of me out there as well. I think people already know that I'm quite a bit of a rage from time to time. There is a game going on, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> there's, like, there's, there's this game going on. Yeah, You know what? Let's talk about the game. Yeah, I'm actually still trying to get my Twitch TV chat working. It's actually not working, guys. My Twitch TV chat is just uh, it's deciding not to not to work. So I won't be able to see your comments in uh, in Twitch. Please feel free to harass me as much as you possibly can. I won't be able to see it. I won't be able to see everything in IRC, though. So you know, the off chance that people need to reach me, find me there in IRC. Hash Vanilla TV is where you can find me. And obviously Twitch TV chat on the right. Scully will be able to monitor that non-stop. Uh, together as everyone else from Vanilla TV who's just going to be around and moderating the chat. Either way, either way, either way, this is going to be the game for tonight. We have etf 2 l Season 14, powered by Twitch.tv, obviously still going on. It's, um, this is going to be keeping going on for the next eight weeks, more or less, so there's going to be different games, different teams, there's going to be uh, uphill battles, there's going to be people getting completely smashed. I'm not sure if we're going to see a fold this season. So far we've seen every season, I think, a fold somewhere in the first two weeks, so far we haven't. I'm very surprised by that. And what we have seen is a couple of lineup changes, though, including the team that we're going to see tonight. Um, the first team is a very known team. Uh, with one roster change compared to last season, which is very simple in the form of the Demo Man. We have Crack Clan. Is Minimus new? No, Minimus not new. I like that. Um, <laughs> as we I have uh, Crack Clan. Crack Clan is uh, the number two from last season. They are back uh, for season 14, quite obviously, and their lineup has pretty much remained unchanged. Brego is going to take the spot of Red Shock. Red Shock, um, yeah, he's, he said he was going inactive. I think he's playing for Doctrino at the moment, a scout. That's not correct. really sure. Um, That's what I've heard. That's, that's what I've heard as well. We haven't seen Doctrine on action, I believe, in Season 14. Uh, we have seen him in the Cup and, and everything like that, but uh, we haven't seen him in action in Season 14 just yet. But uh, Brego, who did join them just before the season, has seemed to be quite a nice fill-in um, for Red Shock. He's been doing work, and the German demo man combined with his German teammates, Ips and Samzi. 50% uh, German now on Crack Clan. Plus one Swede, plus one Irishman, and one English person there as well. Um, it's a bit that's of a quite, multinational team. I was nice. going to say, it's quite funny being that a, few year, a couple of seasons ago, it used to be half um, Jewish. I mean, half Israeli, I apologize for that. Half Israeli. It, wasn't it? Is that right? Am I I'm thinking? quite sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. Matt Nunn, Red, Tarkus, Red Shock, yeah. um, Royce was there, yeah. Paul was there. Yeah. I, used to think, I used to think as Crack Clan as, did, as a team from Israel, and they were in a way. And, it's a shame that the last the last link of that's gone, and so I I guess really that means Admir admirable's now the, the new Israeli in the team. <laughs> Let's call maybe, him that. Maybe, but I mean Bre Brego, he was inactive last season, wasn't it? I think he took a small break, and I'd, he's I'd back maybe... in now. Yeah, yeah, he has uh, come back in, and I don't know what's going on at the moment. So people are leaving the server. I think people are complaining about ping. They change. Okay, they've not told. They're going to. They're going to change servers. Um, I'm guessing someone is going to have to talk to Admiral. We'll figure out the relay for you guys here in just a second. Um, while we do that, we're just going to preview the game uh, from the other side of the pond because basically the enemy team or the team that Crack Clan is facing right now is very simply a sort of mix-up of players. Um, 
we did have a, a team more or less like this last season in my DGB. Um, they were playing in Division 1, Haunter was playing in there, Coins was playing in there, Sai was playing in there, Toda was playing in there, can you remember that? Killer for Fun was playing. God. Um, it was pretty much a non, pretty much a Portuguese team plus Psy. Um, that, that's pretty much the way. I, I cannot remember the last player scout. Uh, apparently, there's a new Source TV, so the it's server been has changed, been changed. Yeah. Uh, we are there right now, as you guys can see on the stream. We are there right now, so we're gonna have this game going here in just a second. But, 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 uh, this team has drastically changed. Coins are still there. Um, Hans are still there. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. That's it. Really. No killer, killer for fun. Killer, killer for, for fun. fun. Yep. Killer but for fun is still there. And when you look at who they've got, they picked up uh, what well, almost can be called one of the hottest free agent medics in Europe. And I love the guy to bits in Evil Moon. And I'm, uh, who I think is an underrated medic. And what he did with TLR last TLR last year was really proved that he could step up and play, be a good medic. And then when you add that, you know, you've, you've got you've got an upcoming and really hot medic. So who are you going to put that with? Who's going to help him? Why don't we just get one of the legends of European TF2? The man that is just completely drunk all the time, every time, <laughs> Darn. Just pick up Darn, you know. So you've got Darn and you've got Evil Moon. And then you pick up Gubbins as well, who uh, was part of the Potentials. And then left the Potentials. Well, we all know what happened there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so basically, it's a, it's a new team. Uh, and of course, they were called My DGB. I think tonight, I, especially with all their uh, avatars, team avatars, they call themselves Pokemon. The Poke Pokemon. Po Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, I'm quite sure we're probably just gonna call it Pokemon, guys. Um, I'm not gonna really put put some sort of effort call it how into we see it. I'm not really gonna put the effort into put the man down. I'm just gonna Pokemon it up. Um, Pokemon, gotta catch him. I, I guess I guess something today because I think today the name change came through. Um, I think something today or yesterday happened with the organization mydgb.net. Uh, obviously, I don't know the insights. Not that much of a gossip person, but I'm sure people in chat or, or uh, anyone else will know. So we'll see exactly how it goes. Um, so this is the first game. This is technically week two, but this is a week one game. Yeah, like the, this, the, game uh, wild carded. this game we're wild carded. Um, so, so yeah, we are gonna have a week one game. Batman's and Gollywash is coming up. Uh, two very known maps. Very, I, I don't, um, not animals. Gully, I think it's very simple. The best team is gonna win tonight. Like on Batman's and Gollywash, there's no gimmicks. Like on process, I can imagine like maybe a team runs a gimmicky gunboat strategy that suddenly cannot be hard countered. But I'm guessing on these maps. There's not going to be any surprises whatsoever for either team. It's just going to be the best team is going to win. The surprise would be how late or how early will Tweet bring out the sniper rifle. <laughs> that's, that's probably going to be it. I mean, seriously, I mean, the gunboats, we all talk about the gunboat. And I'll be honest with you, I've not really seen a massive effect with the gunboats yet. Uh, with, all, with all the, oh, unlocks are going to ruin European TF2 or blah, 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 mm -hmm. you know. I've not really seen a real influence. I've probably just one game that we casted with a couple soldier bombs on mid, but that was it. I mean, what we what else you've got to be really looking out for as well? Pain trains. You know, that's another that's another item which is also quite standard on demo. It's quite standard. Quite standard on, yeah, standard on demo. But what does it do? You 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 uh you you, you will have uh, less bullet. You have bullet reduction. So basically, a scout's pistol, a scout scatter gun, or a soldier shotgun. It's going to do more damage to you. And that's yeah. quite a big deal, especially if you're going to get heavily focused on, on a, at the start of a map. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it on Granary, let's put it that way, like where both scouts are pistol in a demo at the start. Like, I, I really wouldn't want that stuff to happen. Um, that's scary. Yeah, like if you think about it like that, but to be honest, on Badlands, I do not really think that a demo is getting pressure, especially if you're going balcony, I'm, I'm quite sure. It maybe makes like 10 HP difference, and is it worth it for a times 2 cap? Well, I guess it depends on the demo. That's going to be my experience. I, I haven't really been paying attention to it, but I can imagine the pain train on a demo standard. Uh, soldier running gunboats. A lot of soldiers still are kind of in debate. Some roaming soldiers are really fancying gunboats, are really fancying that super fast, super um, unbelievably fast, like bomb onto the enemy train, specifically on Batlands, because we've seen that map so often the past two weeks. Um, it's a little bit weird. I'm not 100% convinced yet. I, as I said, I haven't played myself in a long while. Um, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what these teams choose. I'm quite sure Ips is gonna is gonna run the gunboats because he's just that kind of a roamer. Yeah. Uh, Darn. 
Well, do we really need to get into that guy? I think he's gonna run two gunboats. <laughs> That's what he's gonna do. <laughs> he's gonna have gunboats on his hands and gunboats on his feet. Yes. That's what it's gonna be. I hear one team readying up. I think I just did hear one team readying up. There is 12 second. on the server. They're gonna start any any second now. But, uh, uh, apparently, the relay isn't... Uh, our relay is up, for those wondering. So, of course, it is... Uh, if you're in the if you are in the Twitch chat, exclamation mark relay one or one word, and uh, that will get you the details that you need. Exclamation mark mumble will get you the mumble information if you want to hear hear us as well. So if you want to watch the SCV and then hear our lovely voices that way, uh, you know, uh, you know, we are doing the mumble cast because mm -hmm. we're not like mobas. We, we don't use Skype. <laughs> <laughs> we should somewhere at some point, but it's all right. No, either way. Um, one last thing before we're actually going to go live, Scully. I want your prediction. What do you think? Like, if we put this on paper, Cracklin is a team that just has to start the season properly. And I think with Pokemon here, we have a team that wants to prove something. So a quick, very quick prediction from you, Scully. 5-2. Five 5-2 two. Five two, Cracklin first map. Okay, 5-2 Cracklin Batlands. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see. Cracklin is the favorite, ladies and gentlemen. But my DGB, aka the now Pokemon, they're trailing. Definitely, but we're gonna have to wait and see how this map is gonna go to ZTF 2 l week one in season 14 powered by Twitch.tv Casted here by Pledge and Scully. Matt CP Battles the first map. First middle going right on the way And we see a lot of scout pressure and roaming soldiers all over the place. Soldiers completely taken out the scout already and that horse horse to just go down and even one goes down. The one to be and we saw it join with the soldier we're going with the gumbo strategy like we said jump straight onto the balcony did take down Evil Moon, but I mean, look at Gubbins and Coins just going huge there, taking out the whole of Crackland. Really great turnaround there. They basically just went for that aggressive, the old textbook. You've taken our medic, well, we'll go for your medic, and they went for medic and everything. And it's a complete wipe with basically Gubbins with three, Coins with one. I think Don had a couple, mm -hmm. but it was just complete domination there. The moment they had a bit of a sketchy start, they lost the Evil Moon with it, and they just relied on their death matching power. And really, can we really say that's all done? Don and Gubbins, just the veterans really uh, pulling that out. I'm, I'm honestly not sure. Like, I think I'm quite sure Pokemon is going to keep playing the strategy of, like, let's just go. Let's take the medics out of the equation. Let's just fight this stuff. And I think that's where their odds are going to be biggest. Let's see how they're going to oh. play this out, though. Neither team has Uber. Great shot onto Mini Moose there. Tweak picks up the sniper rifle 30 seconds into the game. And we're gonna have to That's wait and see how long he's gonna keep that going. We see Coins fighting against one of the soldiers. Ips only 26 HP. Is he gonna be able to get pistol down? Coins gets the pistol, he's not gonna get the third pistol. Only got two in. And Ips with 7 HP. Gonna be able to re get into resub. Darn on top of that point. Only on 90, 97 HP though. He's probably gonna die quite quickly here. 47 HP. Is gonna reach his medic. Hunter goes down. Coins oh. goes down. And we see a 6 versus 4 right now. And I think, to be fair, the red team is gonna have to run for their lives here. Drop! To drop! Feed. Drop! The first sniper headshot on a medic that forces a drop about a minute and a half in. So, so like we said, the surprise would be how early or how late they will uh, t uh, tweak will pick up the sniper rifle. Thirty seconds in. How early? How early would that drop come? My God, we're only what? We're only two minutes thirty <laughs> in. This is going to be a fun game, and it's just. I mean, he's going to stick with the sniper rifle because why not? And it's what he Don, does. Don has picked up the sniper rifle. Okay, this so is a bit of a shot. Yeah, apparently this is what Pokemon is saying. You know what? Oh, Speaking of sniping, we're counter sniping. That's Uber, Uber Pop goes straight in there. Sorry to cut you off. The Uber Pop goes straight in there by Crack Clan. They are going to just use it to bully people out there. They look at that. They've got the soldier that's there, mate. In there. Mini Moose does take down Coin, so they are going to cook a couple more. Basically, they use the Uber to make sure they can gain the ra the areas and make sure that basically when we saw when we saw Pokemon go in, they couldn't really get the area secured for them to do a cap. With the Uber there, they managed to get the area completely secured there and just make sure that the scouts and the demo man was safe to take that capture. And they're going to go straight in with the straight ways. Coins just taken out there. Darn, it's still on that sniper rifle, which is a huge disadvantage for them. So Soldiers goes down on the point. No one's there, and it's going to be 1 0 to Crack Clan. Yeah, great push there, coming out from Crack Clan, pushing that advance as much as they possibly can, getting that one to the lead down. It all comes back to how early to pick up that sniper rifle, getting the damage done, and that spire defense. I think if Ips would have gone down there on the side, he was 7 HP, he managed to survive. If he would have gone down, that spire probably would have gone to the red team, but in the end, it didn't work out. Crack Clan pushed their advantage. One to nil is the lead, second middle going right on the way.
Let's see, they're gonna go, let's see, it's gonna be the, uh, the old shithouse technique there. Mini airshot goes straight down onto the soldier. I'm not sure which soldier, but it is. gets taken down from Ips. Now comes the soldier. Basically, both teams have switched around sides. That's the best way to describe them. They have managed, they've basically switched each side. Here comes the soldier bomb straight onto, straight onto a Marable. He does not get taken down. Don gets taken down though because of it. He had to, no choice, out of position and had to try and pick up something out of nothing. I just really just couldn't connect with his rockets, so. Now we're going to see both Ubers up though, because even when we did pull out, they did not see that. They were in a, well, they were in a bad position, I can understand. Here they come, struck out the jump straight away. Bit of a high jump there by the soldiers. Mini Moose does take down coins, the soldiers are on the balcony, trying to do a lot of damage, and look at that soldier just bombing around. Makes the Uber pop, there for Evil Moon, and Admiral has not even popped his yet, and they trap second point. Where is Admiral? They are actually in last, they're going to be taking yeah. last now. Killer Bavon goes down, Don goes down, it's going to be 2-0, this is going quite fast. Yeah, they outpositioned uh, Pokemon's pretty much as bad as they possibly could. Jumping that Spire immediately, forcing that Uber very, very early, and even though there was a scout on top Rubble's face, he did not manage to actually hit him at all. So the Uber was preserved, they pushed into last, a very quick 2 to nil. and right now we're going to have to see this middle, really, if it gets the 3-0 within a matter of 10 minutes, this game is going to be a train wreck. This is the make or break middle. Look at them. They've already put soldiers onto the shithouse to try and prevent it. They've lost Dunn straight away. They've already got. There goes Coins. They've lost two straight away. Now they're in good position to do something about Haunter. Haunter stayed in there and took out Admirable. So they have got the Uber advantage. Look at the soldiers now. Look at Ips and Mini Moose wanting to hunt down Evil Moon. They're going to have to, but you know what? They're not hunting down. They needed help. And when you've only got, when you've got no medic, two soldiers fighting for one health pack. It doesn't come out in a good Tweak comes a medic, matchup. Tweak forcing Uber, Tweak's forcing Uber here on the side, running into the enemy base, getting that two shot onto the medic, even when forced to pop that Uber with about half HP. And uh, obviously that's once again going to take the Ubers out of the equation. And we've already seen that Pokemon's like not having Ubers. Are they this greedy though? Well, Darn is going around choke at the moment. Looks like he fancied just going in a little bit there. He's not going to do it though. Only 60 HP, that's probably the best move. Oh. Killer for fun dying on the side. Samzy opening that stuff up. Brago's only 80 HP though, Brago goes down, this might be an option they wanted, Gobbins landing multiple pipes there, Coins getting a frag as well, a little bit of a weird exchange, and again, no Ubers, nothing of the sort, and the red team really forcing stuff here, they want to make this work, while the Ubers and while teamwork is less important than that matching skills. That kill to Tweak just got there, just really negated any type of push they wanted to do. 3v3 situation which they thought they could actually do, but I'm surprised that I'm that Admiral would decide to go really far back, but unfortunately that, that kill left and tweaked there with his uh, Lugamorph. I like to say Lugamorph, I haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> the Lugamorph there really just picked up what they needed, and then here comes the Uberforce straight away. Evil Moon does not have it, 100 finally gets it, the Soldier jumps onto its head. But the numbers game is straight onto the point there, that's Crack Club put everybody onto the point. They do get coins in now, they're gonna get a soldier, there goes Haunter as well. Evil Moon's got no one to heal, he's into the trash area by himself. That's an exchange, they've lost two people, no one hit, now there comes another soldier here. That's it, that is it, it's on the point. No one is trying to contest them. They've got a soldier and a devil man on trash, and nobody, they don't want to contest it. They are giving up second, again. And when they get themselves into a good position, they get out pushed by just the deathmatch ability of Crack Clan. And once again, Killer for Fun's overextending and just gets out there. I think he was on 50 oh, health. But Don James goes out down. Before. James oh. goes down. That's big. That's big. Killer for Fun's gone heavy. Now that's a uh, bit of a weird pick with no with no medic up. But look at Sounds. He's, they're on to the point though because there's no Devil Man up. They're going to the bottom. I apologize. That qualifies you. You can get something in now. I do apologize. Tweak versus Gobbins. Tweak versus Gobbins. He has the hit. He misses. As Tweak cleans up, getting the triple kill for even L right now in favor of Crack Clan. And Crack Clan making the right decisions there. On Spire, keeping the scouts alive forever. Making sure that they have Spire pressure consistently throughout that entire fight, picking up in the end. And then at that end, Admirable going down, decided screw it, our medic's down anyway. All five suicide in at the same time. And we can see Pokemon's crumbling under the pressure. 3 nil for Crack Clan, fourth middle's going on the way. And right now, the red team being on the ropes, really, they need to get this stuff done. Uh, this is the aggression. This is the aggression they needed. They immediately shoved down, down onto the medic. The medic wasn't there, so he went through to the feet, went through to the window. But they do get down Evil Moon on the exchange. The crack climb are playing a little bit past it, but they got the call to go in. And there's Tweak going around the back there. He gets picked up a kill and Brago there with the pipes. They are, really, they are really going in there. And once again, a mid which I thought the Pokemon could contest. But here comes the last man. It's just the Goblin's up left. A mid which I thought that Pokemon just won, and it just gets snatched from it. It's not, they're not taking V3 
victory. They're not snatching victory from the jaw. You know, they're not snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. It's just more crack clan, just really just knowing where, just knowing presence and you know patience. I don't really think I've seen them seen them make a mistake yet. Um, I'm I'm quite sure that everything they've done so far makes perfect sense and is a hundred percent accurate to what any other team would do, including Epsilon. Um, and that so far has caused Crackland to be up three to nil. Not the fact that Pokemon slash my DGB is any sort of bad or something like that, but Crackland takes advantage and they push it as hard as they possibly can. They smell an advantage. Look at that here. That's what the gunboats allow you to do. Jump in jump out very very quickly see if there's an opportunity and see if there's not if there's not you jump back if there is well you don't do anything and this yeah, is the peak yeah. going sniper. I was say, yeah uh, well I must admit he went in and then the other the rest of Crackland came in and they've lost coins so surely now that's an exchange for an exchange mini moose goes down Darn there Cage getting a soldier out with the unconventional sniper rifle is I'm not seeing do it. no tweaks play scout no, no but look at this Look at this, with the sniper rifle block, they may only have one soldier in the form of uh, Ips, no Haunter I mean, sorry, that's the wrong team. Maybe Haunter, but they do have, the, they do feel confident. In fact, here comes Haunter, he wants to get something. The Uber's come off now, here comes the Uber exchange, but because I believe Crack Clan do get a little bit of an advantage, and they had to, sh and Pokemon had to share, let's just have to go back out there, let's do a reset, let's go for a reset again. Here comes Darn with the sniper rifle, really, one pick from Darn. It's just gonna make or break this push. Knowing right Crack Clan, now. they're gonna go house. Yeah, exactly. Look at them. They're moving around house. This is I've seen Crack Clan do this time and time again. I see Epsilon do this as well. Every time there's a move being made around choke, have a soldier, at least one soldier in house. Because a lot of enemy teams that try to defend, they make a play. And right now, obviously, straight oh, after those Ubers come out, we see it again, we see it again, we see it again. They love, Pokemon love not having that Uber, and they just go, they go, they make it work, they put the pressure down and kill it for fun with the quadra kill so far. Is he gonna put down a number five? It looks like, yes he is. Five frags in total for a Portuguese scout here. Yeah, and Coin's got the important kill on a Mario Abrable there. So that is basically what they needed. Now, whoa, 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 whoa. This isn't right. Oh, they were, they were, re were they trying to go for a respawn? I think they were, sorry. I saw two heavies and I thought, they, are they trying to throw a game? <laughs> of course, Samsey's the rules. sniping. Oh, now, God. Why is Samsey sniping? I mean, uh, I'm not questioning his sniper ability, but when you've got Twig on the point, when you've got Twig, you've really got to go for him. But let's see what Sams can do. He's getting nothing, but at the same time, Pokemon aren't getting nothing. They do take down Sam there with a soldier bomb. In fact, the Uber gets popped off in the po inside the house there. And Marvel doesn't have it though, so the Uber's been wasted as they're trying to bully. Really good idea to bully, but they've got a Marvel now with 60% Uber. Now they want to really push this, but they can't push this. Surely, oh, if it goes straight down anyway, does it matter? They're trying to get a Marvel, but he can't get a Marvel. So much bam. So much so bam. So much bam. It's like pretty insane what Crackline is spamming into that main area. Oh, well, and mainly fine. because of that, Brega was spamming all day long. And Samsy coming in, as the scout, cleaning up, getting a triple there. And Admiral still with that Uber. That spam from Brego all over that main area. Pledge. God, Pledge. there was so much damage. Pledge, I'm going to say it right now. They're not going to miss anything without Red Shock. Just seeing <laughs> Brego there, that, that was Red Shock esque. Yeah. Like, just, just really, just a spam. He's good, man. Brego's good. Dan still sniper. They want to get this drop. They want to make a James drop, but he doesn't. In fact, he forces. He makes the Uber pop. Gets straight down to Dan. Here comes the Dilma. Oh my God! Look at Brago go high. Double sticky drop there to try and take something out. Does not do anything. Loving that play though. That's a really great bomb there from Brago. Doesn't get anything, and they are still trying to hunt down Evil Moon. Look at the scouts trying to hunt down coins. Finally takes Twig down. They have lost. Oh, now they finally lose the Evil Moon from Ips on the flank. Just a little thought they were ah. safe. It was a little bit greedy though from Crackland, and like, it kind of went all the way. And like, while that is fine to do in an Uber versus no Uber scenario, it can be risky against a team so deathmatch heavy as Pokemon is. And we can see right now the Reds are putting some pressure onto this middle, kind of ruffling all over the middle point. There should be no way that the Blues can get out of here. They're gonna try it. A one soldier jumping into the middle, not getting any frags done. Gets shot in midair by Gubbins. He had stickies all over the place. And we can see that Admiral, even though he has a massive Uber advantage, there are six Reds who are ready and hunt for blood. See, I think Evil Moon should really, they're gonna play this, oh, they finally take down my Admiral. Don thought, you know what, I'll get the rocket launcher back up, but for me, this is something that Evil Moon really should, like, look at going Crit's Creep. Did Admiral just, just drop that? No, it was gonna drop. It was 95 or oh, something, wow. it was close, oh, it was close. Oh, oh, wow, can Twig really do this? 
No way, Twi Twi takes down <laughs> Gubbin. The point is captured. Now Evil Moon's on his own. Evil Moon's on his own, so he does the white Twi does the white thing, but he's got the scouts now. As I was saying, when we see this change. Evil Moon really should look at going crits because it works with the mentality that Pokemon are using right now. They want to play that fast place. We don't really want an Uber strategy, and it's working with them. They're not when they put you without an Uber. It's working for them. When they push with an Uber, it's not working for them. I mean, we've got a 50% advantage. That 50, 40, 50. You call Ish. it what you want. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're gonna go through house. That's risky. That is risky. And are they still gonna go through house? They are. Gonna Great go timing. House. Great timing. Look at that. They reached that two point as they were 100. But again, look at the massive amounts of spam. This is coordination at another level. I don't even think I see Epsilon having it this well timed out. But the push right now from Pokemon is really nice. I like this. The aggression that they put in, the soldier jumps that they connect with their medics Uber. Spot on. Absolutely spot on. And Crackland can spam whatever the hell they want. But against an Uber, they're not really going to make that work. 80% now on the Irish medic here for Crackland. But there's so much pressure onto the point. Are they going to be able to defend it? No, yeah. they are not. And while it's not an equalizer just yet, Pokemon showing their face and saying, you know what, we're in this game as well. But that, that round win came around too late, in my opinion. They really needed that win in the third round, not the fourth. This fifth middle now, once again, is a make or break game. And there's only 15, there's still 15 minutes left. But this is the make or break. This is make or break, I'm sorry. This is going to decide it right away. 4-1 would point. make it very difficult, definitely. Yeah. As, uh, Don gets yeah. taken out straight away. That just says that all the way, did it? Don gets taken out on the suicide. Coins gets taken out there. They're trying to throw too many people onto the point. I mean, the, the worst damage, finally, Ips gets taken out. That was the worst damage, with Ips going down to 9 health. That just had Failboat written all over it, because it was just too aggressive. They, they lost Don, and instead of trying to just play it safe, they just went a little bit too aggressive. Maybe just probably a little bit overconfident. I wouldn't say overconfident, but I'm trying to find the right word. I think you know what I'm trying to say. I'm not, looking around at the moment. Me. There is an uber advantage. Don't run that sniper rifle again. Killer Ips, for fun picking Ips up the heavy spy. weapons guy. Ips a spy. We've seen this countless of times. He loves doing that kind of stuff. Tweak as well, by the way. We'll see how this is going to go. Crack Clan, are they going to push out or are they coordinated together with the spy? I'm looking at Ips at the moment. You take a look at that uber. What's going to happen? You can see the spam coming in from main and that's when Ips comes in. It's perfect. <laughs> perfectly orchestrated by Crack Clan. Just e e brilliant there, isn't it? Here comes the Uber. Is that Uber really needed? In fact, they've not even got a kill from the Uber yet. Finally takes down Gubbins. That's it. And it's going to be one Delman left. Haunt is the last one up. He does survive. That's just all on the spy Spot on. Spy that's in. All on and the as, spy soon, as soon as the spy reaches about the point, that's when you push in because the medic is going to be forced to heal multiple targets and has very rarely to actually look behind. And that's when Ips comes in, gets the simple stab. There you go, perfect. And yeah, and they weren't expecting Ips to off class. Really, when you think about it, you expect Twig to off class. Yeah. If you don't see a sniper, you think you're fine. <laughs> well, yeah. There so we go, this... though. Six middle. Six middle, Scully. Six middle right now. Ips has taken down a minibus, gets taken down already, so that's not going to be good for them. They do take down Don. Not going to do much at the moment. It's going to be four versus four now, four versus three. But watch the power there of Twig there. He is on a run. He does take down Killer for fun. He does take down Coins. Even when the Gubbins are the last two up, and Twig's going to say, you know what? I don't want the point. I want the glory. And the glory cost him. And he's dead. And it is crits, is it? Yeah, it is. It's just so late. We didn't see it. Here it comes. Here wow. it comes. It's going to hit the on timing. Here comes the crit. Misses the first one. Is he going to be able to hit the second one? No, he does not. He's going to look for Admirable. Oh, oh what a pipe there. Getting Brego down. But Admirable is still alive. There's this crit what? sticky. They're going to have to get, <laughs> gonna have to get rid of that sticky. Where the hell is even going to position himself? It looks like House is the way to go. And it... Yeah, definitely. Pokemon is going to try to at least put some pressure here. Force an Uber here or there because the Delman is gone. There's no stickies. And remember, if they get rid of that Uber Uber charge onto Crackland, they're going to have a shot at holding this Spire. But they need to get rid of it early. They cannot wait for them to reach their lobby door. Well, it all also comes down really is how pay, how much do, is that uh, going to hold that Uber? Because look at it now. Evil Moon's up to 70%. Twick goes down. That's got to be a sniper chip pick, surely, because he doesn't. Really, he's never usually that that aggressive. I'm just looking. 90%. Here they go. So, does the Evil Moon want to go on this to do the fight to do the fight strategy of cancelling the Ubers and getting an advantage, or are they just going to go on this just for the drop? In fact, Don gets taken down. For but take down Ips. It's a roam for a row. Well, surely you've got to say right now they are. They do lose coins. They can't do anything now. They cannot do anything with this crit. 
So we're even more stalemate here. Eleven minutes no, left. No, going. Crackland's going. Well, they got. Well, yeah. Do you, you blame them? Look at them. They're just no, going to well, walk in. Yeah, but oh, they're yeah, going to walk in. Standard Uber, standard Uber, admirable. Well played by James, responding there perfectly in time. Minim was quite weak though. He's going to be a little bit careful. As the Uber does come pop off on this right hand side, Aspire, Crackland, they kill Haunter though, but it's still both Scouts and a Sniper are still alive for my DGB or uh, Pokemons as they're now called. And we're gonna have to wait and see. It looks like Crackland again executing this reasonably well. Ips now picking up this map back under four health. Admirable goes down. But again, look at how long the Scouts from Crackland stay alive. They're both full health as well. They keep doing this every Spire push. And what that creates is the times two, times four last second caps on the Spire. It's fantastic. It works very, very well. Speak running into last there. He's gonna find a Scout. He's gonna be able to shut down a Scout. No, he does not. Haunter picks him off with the help of Killer for fun. And he's I'm going to push this. No, they are not. And th my question is, is even when running Medigun? Yes, he is. Good boy. Yeah, it's one of the uh, one of the premier scout combinations. Well, the premier because then the premier ship. One of the top scout combinations in Europe at the moment really is Twick and Samsey. Not because of Twick, but because of Samsey as well. We've got to just say that for both of them. They are both an amazing and they really work on each other's strengths and weaknesses, which is fantastic. I know uh, it's hard to say that they've got weaknesses, but you know, everyone's got a weakness. Brilliant play as well from the scouts, really helping them. Then, when you look at the score, really, Samson 42, uh, quick 40. And Brago yeah, goes down, Dunk goes down. Admiral's 97, he's gonna have to hit the soul, hits the soul, gets oh, the Uber. Man. But where really is it gonna take him? He's gonna Ad be able to watch. He cost. Oh, God, Admiral, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Are they seriously picking this up? I'm not sure. As oh my god, there's so many people on the point. Ips goes down, but I know where is he? Many was still around there, and even, we can see, even see Admiral coming into the fray. Has the overdose equipped? It's not going to help him out at this moment in time. But even when has that Uber, so at that point, no way that's going to get capped. I'm actually surprised to see Ips not going spy. He's going sniper. There you go. So he is going to off class. And Ips, to be fair, he's not that bad of a sniper. No, he's not bad of a sniper. It's quite funny when you've got Samsey, Ips, and Twig on one on a team that can snipe. You know, that's crazy. You've got three people that can off class and off class well. Is that like a new meta for this season? As many as many people as you can to off class. Are we gonna are we gonna see an Abrabulk off class soon for some reason? You know, it just feels like that all of a sudden. I just want to have a look really, just to see if I can. I'm pretty sure that they haven't gone offline on Steam. Uh, they have, so I can't actually check to see the frag stats, which is a bit of a shame. Oh, look, Dante's look down here. Yeah. Bit of a shame that I was going to check who's topping the frags at the moment. It's just really a passive play at the moment. Uh, Admirable wants, really just wants to wait for the Uber himself, and he's got the Uber. Are they holding top balcony? Tfee, by far. Really okay, Darn comes for a shot. Let's see, Darn comes in, left hand side Aspire. Or right hand side, what depends whatever chance you're looking at. Darn looking at the Oh my god, Uber gets was already popped off quite early. How the hell did that happen? I didn't even see that. But suddenly Brengo got connected on. I Ah like this is the thing. Pokemon's kind of need to go. But pushing pushing out on this is unbelievably difficult. It's running engineer. Yes, I saw that. I've no idea why. No, but he's just going to build a level 3. He built up the level 3 at spawn, and he's going to put it at launch pad probably in a bit, if he has the chance. So, let's see if, if he's going to have the chance. He's going to see. Okay, he's going to build it up now on choke. He's going to see if there's anyone there. Delman is not there. I can only expect him just kind of camp with that sentry. Yeah, he built it up to level 2. He's going to put it on choke. Evil Moon goes down. Um, oh, Evil Moon goes down from Twit on the flank again. Evil Moon has just been rampage on the flank since this game. I'm just going to say that right now. Just really like there, there you go. There's the tier. There's the tier. For, there's the level. For, there's only a level two at the moment. It doesn't matter. I mean, you can back up all you want. You can back up all you want with the double back up. It's no not going to help you. Yeah. No one can block it. That sentry's just there. It does take down Gubbin. Oh, and a taunt from Ips there just to rub salt, salt into the wounds. Surely now they're going to look at pushing this. Now they've got the Uber advantage and they've got four two man advantage. They're gonna go to the bottom because you know what? Gubbins is down. We can go for that way. Here comes the Uber. We're gonna walk straight past Killer for Fun, who's, the, who's got the uh, heavy up, and uh, Abrable drops the Uber. And you know what? That's just the way it is. It's just <laughs> been so aggressive from Crack Clan. And you're right. You're right in what you said earlier that, you know, Pokemon aren't doing much wrong. It's just the fact that Crack Clan they are barely on it. make mistakes. Like, it's. 
occasionally you see like a little edgy mistake that against Epsilon would probably make a difference. But against a team like this, they're pretty much spot on. And on this middle, once again, that's gonna have we're gonna have to wait and see what is Cracklin exactly gonna do. Mini boost defense from the scout from the left. Very simple. And the rest of the team puts pressure. Ips on the side is gonna try and equalize that up. It's not equalized, escape land. Sorry, I messed that up. As uh, everyone else from the Pokemons now comes in, it's a two two versus three exchange. Very nicely done so far by the red team. Even when you oh. stay alive, though, does get shot down by Tafik. That guy is on fire. That Do you know what? I'm absolutely on fire. I, Hunter and Coins both have 49 health and, fin and are the last men standing. That, that's quite an omen. But I just love that. I really want to hear the comms for Crack Clan right there because jo I'm pretty sure Brago was putting a lot of damage onto, Min onto Evil Moon. And then he was left with like 13. Oh, sorry, it wasn't Gubbins, it was the soldier. It uh, must be Haunter. Yeah, Haunter was putting so much damage onto Evil Moon. What am I saying? Haunter's on his team. Soldier for Crack Clan was on. <laughs> and basically. Just, try again, try again, try again. The soldier on Crack Clan put a lot of damage onto Evil Moon. Green Catcher it was. Gave the call that he was really low. Not sure how low, but he was 13 health. And Twig just came out of nowhere, almost like a Rocky Horror, almost like a horror movie. Yeah. Just completely out of nowhere. Got him in. Really, now we see Crack Clan wants to go with the no Uber point. And they've got the numbers up. And really, they had the spawns up as well. But nothing. Gubbins gets a double kill with Sticky. That just says it all. That, yeah, no. That, Gubbins had everything stickied up. And even though there was a lot of pressure coming from that door, because he didn't actually blue the Sticky straight off, it seemed like there were not Stickies. But he waited for Brego. Brego showed his face. And suddenly, he was dead. And Admiral was kind of like, ah, I guess there were Stickies there. And uh, now Gubbins immediately taking uh, taking everything into his own hands, coming onto the Spire area. Up oh, against cool. three, though, Darn gets the shot on Ips pretty much straight off the bat. And the pressure, oh, look at that. I love that scout positioning that Pokemon is doing so far. I think it's Coins sitting onto that Spire area. Like, you can Uber whatever you want, but it's not going to work if you lose Ips straight off the bat and there's a scout just harassing you nonstop. It's pretty much fantastic. Or, uh, as we're going to have to wait and see now, how is this going to go in? Darn gets a shot on Speak. Second shot on the road that he's made. Very nicely done. As now Pokemon's gonna knock onto Crack Clan's door. Tfeek is down, remember that. But Killer for Fun gets immediately shot down. That means we have a 5 versus 5. A 5 versus 4. Gar Darn gets another shot in. Showing his skill as Sniper here is now very much clearly Evil Moon. Together with his Devilman Gobbins just gonna make way over the top left hand side. And Gobbins gets stuff done. 5 to 2. With 4 minutes left on the clock. Scully might be right in his prediction. Shh. Don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. I just jinxed it because I want you to be wrong, dude, of course. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. Three minutes. Let, 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 there has to be another round in this for four minutes if we're going to take this mid straight away. Just want to see what the soldiers are doing. Crackhan didn't really jump anybody up until the last minute here. Here comes the soldier jump. Four Pokemon, though. Doesn't get Amberball. So he pops out and does survive some seven health, and then Samsy says, hello, we'll take you out. Now comes the soldier from it from Crackhan. They take out Evil Moon. That's how you do it. That's it. Showing Don exactly how to do a soldier bomb. And now they're just going to wipe up the point, really. When you look at it, Brago goes down. And again, the scouts again with two, two kills there. So that's up to like four kills. Four kills on that mid yeah. were from the scouts. Well, and that perfectly suits with everything that I'm seeing right here on the frag board so far. We have Tafik topping the board, 33. Killer for fun is the next 23. Um, there's a difference of 10 frags between Tafik and everything else on the server. So very well done by him, definitely topping that board. Definitely playing a massive role in Crackland's victory here. But from what I can see is that Tafik, together with Samzi, they have 65, or 56 frags, sorry. Um, and on the other side, we have uh, coins together, obviously, with Killer for Fun, quite a bit less as this push now comes in for a 6 for 2. This has to be a 6 for 2, really. They're just going to clear the stickies out, playing a little bit passive. Just take down Killer for Fun. They're going to take down the soldier there. Surely that soldier's going to go down. Horda goes down. Stickies are cleared, but Gubbins drops himself down. Had no choice but to drop himself down. And just the, just the teamwork, just the death matching. I mean, I've, we've got to stress this, really. I think. I think Pokemon have played a really good game this game. It's, you know, the scoreline doesn't say it. And that's why I said 5-2. I knew that 5-2 would be a scoreline that would say exactly what these two teams are. What we're are. seeing so far, yeah. We, we see a yeah. Cracklan that is pretty much untouchable. That is very much not showing any weakness. And Pokemon not playing a bad game. We can see them do quite a bit of good stuff. And whenever Cracklan makes a mistake, they punish it. Like right now, getting that double soldier bomb in. Immediately two frags straight off the bat. And Gubbins with 10 HP backing off should not walk into everything that you can see right there. And look at that. Just a gang rape all across the blue team. Brego, yeah, yeah, the yeah. only player alive. That is basically... 
Like, that is how good, that, that is a good mid-fight for them. That's a mid-fight that works for them. But they've been doing good mid-fights all game, and Crack Clan proven why they're the second best team in Europe. Possibly third after this season, you know. You, you know, you never know. You know, that, that just proves how good, decent they are, but they've not been able to do anything. Look, mm -hmm. Ips, has, Ips has gone spike. Twig's gone heavy. Yeah, I said that. Don't, don't quote me on that. Which, of course, it means we've got the old... Uh, the Boston Basher or that sword. What is that ah, sword that Samsy's using? The, Chris Krieg on Evil Moon. Chris Krieg on Evil Moon. Let's just get this straight away, right away. There is a spy coming behind them, but it's not going to do much. <laughs> it does do much, actually. Just as the Chris was getting ready to go, and yep. just, boom, Sniper did the spy just taking it straight out. Ips is having a good game, man. What can I say? Oh, the whole of Crack Clan is just, you know. A man once said you are never in the zone, but you're near it, and you almost feel that you're near it. And I think that's what Crack Clan is. They're near that zone. It's pretty much spot on what zone. they're showing. Yeah. 40 Brilliant. seconds left on the clock, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I do not think that a 7-2 is possible, but obviously a 6-2 or a 6-3 is definitely still within possibilities. Crackland's going to push out on this. Not really sure why. Like, I guess it doesn't really matter. I guess they can just kind of wing it about and we'll see what happens. Um, and Pokemons are just going to have to let this spire go. Even <laughs> Onter coins and Killer for fun are actually all going to go down here, so... I don't think time wise is possible. No, it's 17 seconds on the clock. Screw that. That's not possible. Uh, six to two. Six to two, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be the official scoreline here between Crackland in the blue and Pokemon, who was previously known as mydgb.net, is in the red. Crackland winning this first map. Six to two, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. As uh, the first map, Badlands ends. We're on our way to Gollywash's ETF to all season 14, powered by Twitch.tv. Um, this is week one. Very much sort of the week one. It did get well to card it, so it gets played in week two. Badlands and Gully Wash on the map. We're on our way to Gully Wash here with Legends Gully and Animal on the stream here for Vanilla TV. We'll see you guys here in just a bit. Don't go anywhere. There's a couple of things I want to point out, Scully. Go for it. First of all, I'm lagging so hard, not myself, but my Twitch chat is lagging so hard, I can honestly see the chat right now from 10 minutes ago. Really? Um, yeah, it's really confusing me, because I said something about which scripts were allowed and which weren't, I don't know if you caught that in the Twitch TV chat, yeah. I said something like that, and 10 minutes later it showed up as, oh, thanks Pledge, thanks Pledge, stuff like that. So I was very confused. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do, do this right now. Everyone on Twitch chat, who is your man of the match for that? Let's see how long that takes. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll see how long that takes. Who is uh, your man of the match? I want to point out two things. Oh, yeah, first of all, yeah. first of all, and it's not the man of the match, I want to point out how well I thought Gubbins was doing. Um, because he is not a down man by nature. Like, I've seen him, it already shows up. So screw it. Apparently, <laughs> people are just late. Doesn't matter. Um... But thanks for testing. That's perfect. Uh, I do actually think Ips is man of the match, but I'll get to that in a bit. Um, Gubbins was... Like, he's a scout by nature. Like, he's played Demo Man before in Division 2 or Division 3 or something like that. Like, he's been there. But when it comes to Prem, when it comes to Division 1, he's always played scout. And now, suddenly, here he is as Demo Man. Well, good luck against Crackland. You know, this is... And I really felt that he was under... Not underrated, but but completely overblown by just the sheer talent that is in Prem at the moment. You have the Devil Man, uh, Numlock's playing, Cadis is playing. Uh, obviously, Red Shark used to be playing. Is now Brego for Crack Clan. Uh, which other fantastic Devil Man do we have? Like I, I cannot even oh. freaking name them all. Like.